welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm your host, Bob DeMarco. Coming up, we take a look at some tactical tweezers designed by Bob Terzuola. We uh, look at the state of the collection. I got some damned designs in here, and I really like these damned designs. And then uh, we'll also take a look at my top 10 uh, all-tie, full-tie handled knives in my collection. Uh, you'll notice a, a couple of caveats when we get there. I'll, I'll point those out. But first, a pocket check. You know that that's my first opportunity to show off the knives I'm carrying uh, that day. And oftentimes, I on podcast days, the days I know we're recording, I'll look a little deeper into the collection and uh, look for things maybe I haven't carried in a while because that way, when pocket check time comes along, I have something that I haven't shown you in a long time uh, to show off. So I did that with one of my knives today. And also, it's thematic. Uh, this knife does not appear in uh, my top 10 knives. Um, with full tie handles because I rarely carry it because it's like a boat anchor, but I'll never get rid of it. And that is my Boker F3 designed by uh, Vox. So uh, Mr. Vox Nays uh, over there in um, Denmark. I was about to say Daneland <laughs> in Denmark. Um, the reason I'll never get rid of this beautiful knife is that I was carrying it on the day my second daughter was born. And uh, you know me, I'm an old uh, sentimental Italian. I'm not going to get rid of this uh, because of that reason. So um, here it is. I carried it a lot when I first got it. Um, and then, you know, other things came along, maybe lighter things, and uh, started carrying those. But this is a beautiful uh, full clip point, uh, full tie handled clip point design. I love the clip point blade. It's quite a broad blade and it is slightly hollow ground and it is just ridiculously uh, sharp there and quite thin behind the edge. But when you look at it from the spine, it's got a thick old slab of steel and the handle scales are quite thick as well, titanium. And then when you look down inside there, you'll see that there's no weight relief pockets in there whatsoever. So it is a big, uh, well, I should say it's a heavy knife. It's not that big. It's got a three and a quarter inch blade but I remember when this came out, uh, oh, that blade is S30V, by the way. I remember that when this knife came out, uh, Jesper Voxnez was, um, was, I don't want to say he was hot on the scene. He's always hot on the scene, but uh, it, it seemed like his, his, his uh, brand of design was really catching traction. And maybe that was just because of the people I was paying attention to on Instagram. Uh, but he made 10 of these custom. And someone I was following back then uh, I think he went by Dirk Razor Sharp, uh, had gotten a custom version of this. And man, he was just posting and talking about it so much that uh, he whet my appetite for this particular design. So I went and got it. Uh, they have been produced, Boker has been producing this knife ever since, and they've changed the blade ever so slightly, I think in the swedge area um, and probably the blade steel. Uh, and and they've made a couple of other ver smaller version, et cetera, et cetera. So this has been a longstanding um, knife for them and uh, very happy to be carrying it today. It's like a trip down memory lane uh, back to 2014 uh, when I was carrying this a lot. Also, I love the way that the tie on this has, has sort of snail trailed a bit just through carry. And uh, the backspacer is anodized blue as well as the clip. All right, so I'm carrying that today. And then uh, my fixed blade knife, uh, I'm going a little bit smaller today just because uh, that boker is pretty big. I'm carrying the DG Blade Company. That's Dylan Grace uh, Blade Company. I call it Warney Scalpel. I'm not sure if he's officially called it that, uh, but I just wanted to show it in the sheath first because he does beautiful uh, sheath work. He makes this uh, leather look antiqued. He does sort of a, um, a water um, forming, you know, getting the leather wet and then um, wrapping up the, the knife and compressing it. And then it's it's basically like Kydex. I mean, it really retains that blade really well without a retention strap. So I'm carrying this and here's the knife itself. 
a uh, how long is this knife? Uh, this blade. Okay, it's a two inch Warncliffe blade on a much longer handle. Um, this is forged 01 tool steel and buckeye burl. Just a beautiful piece of buckeye burl on this. Nicely contoured. Uh, you look at uh, Dylan Grace's beautiful blades on Instagram, and you'll oftentimes see that the handle is more squared off. He does a lot of squared off kind of handles. Um, but this was nicely contoured, and it really drew me in. And uh, I bought this at Blade Show 2021, if you if you remember. And uh, yeah, this the the contoured, uh, smoothly rounded blade handle uh, really, really drew me in. And then I asked him or his wife, I can't remember now, uh, what what the material was, and they revealed it as Buckeye Burl. And I like that because I'm from the great state of Ohio, and that's the Buckeye State. And uh, you know me, I'm not a big rah-rah, go team kind of guy, but I do like that uh, that the handle here is uh, makes me think of Ohio. I love Ohio, and um, I always love going back home to visit and stuff. And so this is a, uh, a nice tip of the hat to that. So today I'm carrying the Boker F3 full titanium S30V clip point folder, frame lock folder, and this beautiful Dylan Grace Warney scalpel. What are you carrying? Let me know. Uh, you can call the listener line 724-466-4487, or you can uh, let me know in the comments below. I just want to know. I want to know. And as Jim is reminding me here, uh, we do have a podcast scheduled with Dylan Grace later this uh later this month in August. Um, really looking forward to talking to him. He was a real nice guy. And um, I think what he's doing is really compelling work. I, I love uh, more and more I'm getting into forged knives. And, you know, I always just love fixed blades. So I'm um, looking forward to to uh, talking to him and finding out about his process. Actually, on Instagram, he's been posting a lot of videos of his process, which uh has a lot of steps, what can I say? Uh, so very interesting videos to watch. Also on Instagram is The Knife Junkie, a guy you may have heard of. He puts up these beautiful pictures. I mean, they are just gorgeously composed and uh, and finished uh, photographs of his knife collection. <laughs> All right, I'll stop talking in third person because like everyone else, I find that totally obnoxious. But I've been putting up a lot of pictures of my collection up there, uh, collection update kind of pictures, but also uh, one minute audiograms that Jim uh, pulls out from the weekly interview podcast. And uh, I've been putting them up on Instagram. So check me out on Instagram, The Knife Junkie, and uh, you can find out what's coming up or what's uh, what what that week's interview is, as well as get a look at some of the knives in my collection like this one. Here is a uh, an MW Blade uh, MW Steelworks Merlin. I've been showing this one off recently. Uh, Marcus Williamson is the uh, knife maker, and uh, love this knife. And I have put uh, pictures of this on Instagram recently. But the reason I bring this up right now is that he's a guy that I've discovered on Instagram. I didn't discover him, but. The disc, you know, my discovery of him was on Instagram, and um, he is going to be coming on Thursday Night Knives this week. Uh, so be sure to check us out Thursday Night Knives. That's 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch Live. You can talk to us uh, via the comments, or you can go to theknifejunkie.com/join and come on screen and talk with us in person. But Marcus Williamson is going to be on, and we're going to take a look at some of his work. And uh, and also just kind of get to know him a little bit. Uh, I've been paying more and more attention to him through Instagram, uh, especially since I've gotten this. Uh, he sent it to me to check out. I loved it uh, so much and commented uh, as such. And he said, keep it. I want you to have it. And, you know, what was I going to say? No, I'm not a rude guy. I'm a nice guy. So I said, OK, I'll take it. <laughs> uh, so this Merlin is now mine. It makes a great pocket knife, by the way in this uh, little pocket slip, leather slip that goes in your pocket. Boom, there it is. It fits nicely in the jeans, in the front jeans pocket. So check it out, Instagram, The Knife Junkie uh, on Instagram, but also you can check out um, Marcus Williamson, uh, MW Steelworks. 
uh, on Instagram and also Thursday Night Knives this week, August 5th at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, if you think what we're doing here is good, if you think it's worth it, if you think uh, you want to see more of it, you might want to support us on Patreon. Go to theknifejunkie.com slash Patreon as quick as way to get you there. And, um, you know, you as a member, you can choose from three different tiers of support. And the top tier of support, you're called the Gentleman Junkie. Even if you're a woman, you are a Gentleman Junkie. And uh, in being so, you get entered into a monthly uh, drawing for a, uh, a knife. And we've had some really cool knives come through here. A lot of them have been donated by uh, this old sword, Blade Reviews. That's Dave, great guy, great knife collection, and a uh, very generous dude. So we've been uh, giving away a knife every month, third Thursday, and uh, it's been great. Uh, but you also get other... Uh, you also get other perks as being a Patreon member, and it can be at any level of support. Uh, you get stickers, you get access to exclusive content and uh, early access to the interview shows and the midweek supplemental. So go to theknifejunkie.com slash Patreon to uh, get there uh, quickly and to make a seamless transaction. That's theknifejunkie.com slash Patreon. You're listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. So it's no secret I love fixed blades. And, um, well, I noticed that uh, the Italian knife company Lion Steel uh, has come out with a new fixed blade by Tommaso Rumici, who is a um, pretty popular Italian knife maker and designer. And he has, uh, last year, he had a knife come out with them that we featured on this show. And uh, now he's got this new one uh, called the H1 and the H2. And uh, this is sort of a um, sort of a blend between uh, tactical and um, sort of utility knives. I mean, obviously, any knife can go either way. And tactical, as, uh, as Ben mentions in this article, tactical kind of almost means nothing at this point. But uh, any... It, Kind of means nothing more than the aesthetics, but this one uh, with the karambit ring on the end of the handle sort of uh, makes it seem a little more tactically. Uh, but it comes uh, in M390 blade steel. That's uh, that's Lion Steel's usual steel. It's a just hair under three inch blade. You can get a drop point or this beautiful sort of sheep's foot design, and. I got to say, the sheath is just a knockout. It is a beautiful sheath because uh, obviously you can you can set it up for uh, dangle carry. That, that's what you call it. Or you can also set it up for scout carry. And I, I just really like the setup here. But also having that karambit ring um, makes it a very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, versatile. You don't have to use it like a karambit. You don't have to flip it and, and do all these fancy techniques. Uh, it does allow for uh, an extended um, selection of handholds and, and ways to draw the knife. So really, I mean, we're starting to see many, many uh, knives with those rings on the back uh, of the handle. And they don't uh, preclude you using it just like a regular knife and gripping it. I mean, really, it's an effectively just a pommel without having to put your finger through. But it's there to put your finger through for drawing it and for, you know, maybe using it like a karambit. But uh, it really just makes it more versatile in terms of how you carry it and also how you draw it. Uh, this is an, an integral... And, uh, you know, integral means a lot of different things. On a folder, it means a handle milled out of one piece of material like titanium or G10. Um, on, on a fixed blade, it can mean that the bolster and the guard area is all one piece with the blade and the tang. Or in this case, uh, when Lion Steel calls this an integral, that means that that handle is all uh, uniform, going all the way around the tang. In other words, you don't see the tang uh, exposed on any part of that handle. Um, so yet another, uh, definition of integral. And, um, I had to kind of look up what they meant because I could tell from the bolts on the scales that they were scales. Uh, but really what they mean is that, is that the, um, the channel for the tang is milled out in the, uh, on the underside 
of the scales so that when the two scales come together, it's one uniform um, surface of micarta going all the way around. So interesting offering from Lion Steel from Tommaso Rumici. I just like saying Tommaso Rumici. And uh, I love the two different blade shapes here. Uh, I love that drop point, but you know my heart belongs to that sheep's foot. Uh, and, and the sheath is just just gorgeous. So check it out, coming from Lion Steel uh, uh, in the offing, uh, M390 blade steel. Who doesn't love M390 blade steel? Okay, next up is an interesting thing. You know Bob Terzuola for his for being the godfather of the tactical folder. Well, now it appears as if he's the godfather of the tactical tweezer. That's right. He designed tactical tweezers for Civivi. And you might ask, what is a tactical tweezer? How how do you get tactical with tweezers? Um, really, what I think they're really referring to is the packaging is quite tactical. Uh, okay, so this is a pair of tweezers um, that are held inside a little casing. And uh, when you unscrew the the uh, the retention, the little piece of uh, retention screw, it's a little knurled uh, disc, it slides forward kind of like an out the front uh, automatic. And, um, and then you have tweezers right there. You might ask, what do you need tweezers for? Well, uh, I will be quite honest. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be more honest than you want to hear right now. But um, my wife sometimes tweezes my unibrow. Uh, she's basically uh, she's basically groomed me to the point where the unibrow has just given up the ghost, and she doesn't have to do it much. But uh, that was one of the things when we first met. You know, she's like, I, I, I'm very attracted to you, but but that unibrow's got to go. <laughs> and so uh, yeah. Um, all right, so there you go. That's a, there's a, you've, you've you've taken a step into my past, into my intimate past. Uh, but tweezers can be used for a lot more. Say you're out actually doing work with your knives, and uh, you get a splinter. What's the best tool to uh, remove that? Well, a pair of tweezers. Do you have tweezers on you? Well, the question is, do you have a Swiss Army knife on you? If you do, then you have tweezers. If not, you're going to be wanting these Civivi tactical tweezers. Um, I think they're cool. I, I, I'm not sure I'm going to run out and, and get them, uh, but if I had to pick a new pair of tweezers right now, you better believe they'd be the Bob Terzuola design tweezers. So these are the first um, Civivi products he's designed, though he did a mass drop um, folder that was manufactured by Wee Knives. So kind of um, obliquely, he's had things, uh, you know, he's, he has some Wee designs, but... I don't know. I saw this. I thought it was pretty interesting. I don't know. What do you think? Tactical tweezers um, by Bob Terzuola. Uh, if anyone's going to do them, it should be him. Am, am I right about that? Uh, so let me know. <laughs> Call the listener line, 724-466-4487. Let me know what you think of Bob Terzuola designing tweezers. Um, you know, he's allowed to design whatever he wants. Um Maybe he needed a break from designing the coolest knives in the universe and uh, and just, you know, decided to do this. I don't know. Let me know. All right. Well, that's it for Knife Life News. Uh, still to come, we're going to take a look at four damned designs. These damned designs, I really like them. And uh, we're also going to take a look at the top 10 uh, full tie folders in my collection. And I will explain the caveat when we get there because there are more tie knives in my um in my collection then I will be showing off, but uh, but we will get to that in just a minute. Before we get there, I wanna tell you about something coming up that's gonna be very exciting. Two weeks hence, we have the um, birthday bash. Jim and I are both turning, well, our next age this month, and I will be turning 50, and I've been talking about it all year because, um, you know, it's, uh, it's different than turning 40, definitely different than turning 30. This one is, I don't want to say it's hit me hard, but I'm, it's it's made me reflect on things. I've changed some habits um, leading up to this, and uh, I want to be here for another 50 years and in good good shape, um, you know. So I, <laughs> I've made a few little changes here and there, and I've just been reflecting a lot. So the birthday bash is coming up on August 21st. I think we'll probably start 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, but don't quote me on that. Uh, we have a number of confirmed guests and others who are checking their calendar, and we have tons of giveaways. Uh, we will have uh, Laren Thomas will be on. Uh, we have Doug Ritter coming on. 
uh, we have, um, uh, um, Oh, dag nabbit. Well, we've, I've also spoken with Marianne Halpern. She wants to come on. She's checking her calendar. Incidentally, her birthday is in August and so is her husband, Les Halpern. They're both August babies. So we're going to have, uh, we're going to have <laughs> my cats outside the door meowing. Sorry. I, I, that just distracted me. We're going to have a whole bunch of people here. We're going to have a whole bunch of giveaway stuff. Uh, Finch Knives has pledged a knife they're going to be giving away. Marianne is going to be sending some uh, scales for the TRM Adam. We're going to be giving away. We have this awesome T-shirt design that Jim just came up with um, uh, this past week. He's been working on this design. I think it is so cool. Uh, I'm going to get a couple for myself so that I don't forget 82121. And... Um, well, just come join us. Uh, you know that you can talk to us through the comment section, but you can also go to the knifejunkie.com on your device slash join and come on and speak with me in person and uh, talk to wh whomever uh, is on screen at the time. Probably run about two hours, but you know me. Once I start talking, it's hard to stop me. So uh, who knows how long it'll go. Uh, but be sure to join us. The Knife Junkie Birthday Bash, August 21st, 2021. The GetUpside app is your way to get cash back on your gas purchases. GetUpside is an app you put on your smartphone, and whenever you need to get gas, search your area for savings, claim your discount, fill up your tank, and then take a picture of the receipt with your phone. And that's it. You've just got cash back. Visit theknifejunkie.com forward slash save on gas to get the app and start saving. Again, that's theknifejunkie.com slash save on gas. These damn designs. All right, I'm done. I'm done with that joke. But damn designs. They've had a number of knives coming around the uh, through um, uh, Peter, um, a therapeutic edge. I'm sorry, that was just not rolling off the tongue. Uh, Peter, a therapeutic edge, has a great knife group called the Knife Exchange. It's a pass around group. And uh, these knives have been going around and I've just been digging them. You've been seeing some of your favorite online reviewers uh, do uh, videos on these and they have come my way and I really love them. And a cool thing about uh, Damn Designs uh, is that they, when they first came on the scene, um, they were, uh, Damn Designs was producing um, some very high-end uh, M390 full tie knives and now uh, Mr. D'Souza, the the uh, the gentleman who runs who runs Dam Designs out of uh, where is he out of Wyoming, I think, has decided to. When we talked about this a couple weeks back on the show, has decided to make his designs more accessible, and so he's having them produced uh, in D2 and liner lock versions in D2, and um, keeping them at fifty dollars or below. And I gotta say. They are out of this world. I love these knives. And, you know, that's almost a pun out of this world because these four knives I'm about to show you are all um, named after mythical um, mythical creatures or, or characters or uh, what have you. This is called the Cerberus. Um, and it is this really nice three and a half inch clip point blade here with... Uh, a liner lock. This one happens to have a uh, natural Jade G10 on there. And uh, you can see the weight reduction inside. This is a big knife. I mean, this has a nice, nice size to it. Three and a half inches, a nice broad handle that really fits the hand, uh, fills the hand, and a nice broad blade with a saber grind that comes to a really fine edge. Very fine edge. These things are super sharp. Here, let me let me bring them out. I'll wheel them out one at a time, actually. Got a deep carry pocket clip. I mean, he goes way deep, these pocket clips. See that? Pretty cool. Uh, you've got a G10 backspacer, G10 handle, and then a very nice looking um, sort of, uh, it's almost like a calling card at this point, but this hexagonal, uh, um, you know, concentric hexagons on the uh, pivot on the show side. And there's your there's your damn designs logo there, sort of two crossed blades with ram's horns, and uh, excellent excellent flipper action on this. So this is the Cerberus, 
uh, Cerberus. He was the two-headed dog, right? Is that Cerberus? Two-headed dog that guards Hades. And then here is the Hades. Where is the Hades? Let's see. Is this the Hades? No, this is the Invictus. The Invictus, same uh, sort of formula. You got the hugely chamfered, like really widely chamfered uh, edges along the handle here of this uh, drop point. This is the most, I, I got to say, this is the most, um, I've been using the term vanilla, but that's kind of, well, I like vanilla. This is the most vanilla of the designs. Uh, it's it's a full-bellied drop point, and, um, and it's... Uh, got the same G10 handles. It's got the uh, concentric hexagons. Beautiful acid wash handle here. This is the Invict in Invictus. And uh, also excellent, excellent bearing action here. Super deep carry pocket clip. So different look, same recipe. And I like that. I like that because it's sort of like Hollywood. Give me the same but different. You know, and, and they also have um, on the offside they have the off clip side. They have a really nice filler tab, probably the nicest filler tab uh, out there because it's three-dimensional. It's not just a, a piece that fits into a, into a, uh, a cutout area here. It's, it's, it follows the contour of the, of the pommel there. So very nice. That's the Invictus. Uh, next is the Hades. This is the one uh, out of the four I have here that is not a flipper. And oh, I love this one. I love this one. And it's incredibly sharp, like all of them. They come to a really thin behind the edge uh, geometry here, but very, very, very pointy. This is, this, is my, this is my kind of Achilles heel. How do you like that? I threw another little mythical thing in there. See what I did with my, my language? Uh, so this very extreme clip point here it comes to a super fine edge. This is the one that I've used. I've had these for a couple of days and I have used this one just, just a little bit because I don't want to drop it on its tip. That's what I was talking about in terms of my Achilles heel. I see a tip like that. I'm very drawn to it and then I tend to drop it, but I've been getting better and better. So this one has the same really broad chamfering, which leads to a, a very nice, um, again, hexagonal uh, cross section here. You got the concentric hexagons here. You got really nice um, flipper. I mean, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, thumb stud action here. And it's refreshing not to have a flipper. I got to say, I really like it. Uh, great ergonomics on these handles. Another deep carry pocket clip. And then on this particular one, you have the acid wash, acid stone wash, and the um, green. I, I have been not so into OD green, but I think this is a very handsome um, combination here with that sort of darker acid stone wash. Also on bearings, and uh, who doesn't like a thumb stud knife on bearings? Okay, and lastly is the Fenrir, and Fenrir, uh, I had to look it up, is a um, giant wolf, I guess, from Norse mythology. Look at that. Boy, man, that's so. This is a an extreme Warncliffe, or since it's uh, based on a um, Nordic style, uh, Nordic giant wolf, I'm thinking maybe this is uh, a little bit uh, Sax uh, inspired. There again, you have the uh, the concentric hexagonal uh, pivot. You've got the the um, pommel contoured uh, um, filler tab for the offside super deep carry pocket clip. This is the one that has a slightly different looking pocket clip and just great ergonomics. All of these are $50 or less, which to me is mind blowing because I gotta say, I, I really, really think these are high quality knives. And lately I've been, um, I've been kind of snobbish in my carry. I'm gonna be totally honest. Uh, I'll get a knife like this and I'll, I'll really appreciate it really like it. But then I'll be like, <sighs> when I, when it comes time to carry and pick what I'm going to carry, I'll think, well, I have better steels. Maybe I should carry my better steel knives. Um, and I don't know, like I said, it's, 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 um, it's, um, 
it's a mind block lately. But these four knives have kind of jostled me from that way of thinking because they're just outstanding. I mean, I, I love I personally love the way they look. The size is right in my right in my wheelhouse, but they are really well made, super solid and um, useful, and they've got a lot of character. These knives, um, so I'm really excited about them. I'm gonna do a uh, some videos on them, and uh, I might seek them out. I mean, for fifty bucks, they, these are an insane deal. So there you go. That's that's my quick and dirty of the of these four um, four damned designs. It's the Cerberus, the Invictus, the uh, Hades, and the Fenrir. All cool names, all really cool looking knives, and uh, you know, way, way, way worth way more than <laughs> sorry, <laughs> worth way more than fifty bucks in my estimation. But uh, so he's bringing some some great designs at a great price. He's also got some other designs coming out. We talked about them a, a few weeks back. Uh, some Tanto style knives coming out, and he's going to be reintroducing the higher end titanium frame lock versions of these with higher end steels uh, in another season or two once these have have caught on. He came out of the gate with, with a luxury item, thought, hey, why don't I cut back on the prestige, give the people what they want, get them, give them a taste of what I can do at a lower price point, and then, and then reintroduce, um, reintroduce the designs. So you can find out about these knives and everything I'm talking about here just by going to the knifejunkie.com slash 239. That's this episode number. This is the Knife Junkie episode 239. By doing that, you can find the show itself and watch the show and listen to the show itself. Uh, and you can also get show notes and find out what we were talking about here. We, we, me and myself and I um, right here on the show. All right, so I want to get to these top 10 knives that are full tie in my collection. Okay, so I have a lot of tie folders, frame lock titanium folders, um, and a couple of, uh, as you'll see here, liner lock titanium folders, full tie. The ones I'm going to show you here are just what I said, full tie, not even an inlay, no G10 on one side, no, no, um, no micarta on one side. And so this is titanium all the way around without an inlay, without any other material on the handle but titanium. All right, that's my caveat. Because when I was going through them, uh, going through my knives, I was like, oh, I have to include this and I have to include this and I have to include this. And it started to feel like maybe that's a subcategory. You know, titanium knives uh, that have a frame lock titanium side, but that have other materials on the handle side. So I decided right here, um, uh, it's it's infrequent that I will buy a full tie knife, and um, I don't know something about them. They they really have to really have to tickle my fancy because I also love my Carta, so I I will tend towards that. Uh, but these are the knives that stole my heart with full titanium handles, and uh, so let's get to it. All right, first is one you know like I keep talking about how sentimental I am. This is the knife that I got uh, just days after my second daughter was born. This was a Christmas gift. My daughter was born in December. My wife was exhausted, but uh, I knew she wanted to get me a Christmas present. Just what do you want? Send me a link, she said. And I said, oh, okay. <laughs> I had always wanted a Sage too, And uh, this knife was uh, kind of newish on the scene at the time in 2014. I guess it had been out for a year or two, and I had always admired it, and, and people were talking about how great it was. And so I sent her the link for this, and she's like, hmm, that's rather expensive. And, uh, but she, she clicked buy anyway, and, uh, and here we go. This, so this is the, uh, the Sage 2 by Spyderco, and I love the color of this titanium. I just love the treatment of it. It's beautiful. And, uh, you know, as you know, the Sage series got its name um, because it featured, it was the same design, but featured uh, four and now five different uh, locks. And um, so Sage, like, uh, you know, when you're a Sage, you're an adept, you're someone who knows, you know, who has wisdom on the topic. So uh, the first one was the liner lock 
And uh, that was for uh, Michael Walker, who designed the liner lock. Uh, second is the uh, integral, the Reeve integral lock. We, we call it the frame lock now, but uh, so this was for Chris Reeve. And then uh, the third one was the uh, Butch Ball ball lock, I believe. And then and then and now we're now I'm forgetting. Uh, one of them was a back lock. And then the fifth one was uh, the uh, compression lock. I did this like you're supposed to know. That's me fidgeting with the with the uh, back with the uh, compression lock. So uh, first one on the list, this full tie Sage Two three inch bladed uh, Spyderco. Love that knife. Second is the only uh, full tie liner lock in the lineup. And this is the Tactile Knives Rockwall. Just such a great uh, knife. This is also a three inch bladed uh, knife. This one is a drop point with a swedge. Love the blade on this. Uh, I've commented before on how this drop point is just a little more aggressive than what I usually think of as a as a standard sort of drop point shape. That point really comes to quite an acute uh, tip, and I love that. Uh, the beautifully milled titanium. I mean, we're talking titanium here, and just look at how beautifully detailed the milling is on this. But then again, that's what we know Tactile for. Uh, they started as a, a pen company, Tactile Turn. I mean. So this uh, this knife company, Tactile Knife Company, was spawned from Tactile Turn. I still have to get one of their pens. They're so cool. Uh, I think maybe a, a bolt action pen. Maybe I'll get that as my birthday present to myself. Um, this time of year, I, I end up buying a lot of stuff for myself. Uh, excellent uh, 20 CV blade steel. Very sharp. Um, and a liner lock. You can see that steel liner in there. But just, man, you really get your bang, bang for your buck here with two full sides of titanium milled so nicely with that, with, that, uh, with that texture. And also excellent jimping on the spine. So number two is the Tactile Turn Rockwall, named after a Rockwall County in Texas. Incidentally, that's what they do. They name their knives after counties in Texas where they are located. Next is... Man, uh, this knife started my my love for this kind of knife, really. Um, and it was years until I got one of my own. This is the Les George VSEP. One of the first, uh, what do you call it, uh, mid-tech knives. A knife where a custom knife maker has a lot of the parts cut out elsewhere. And then he finishes and assembles and finishes it and sharpens it and all that in his own lab his own shop. Um, just a beautiful example of the type. One thing that Les George does that I, you don't see too often is look at the chamfering around the lock bar. You know, a lot of uh, very expensive knives that I have don't do that. So you'll feel it right here, uh, right where it, right where the titanium is cut for the, for the lock there, for the spring. And it's sharp, you know? On a very expensive knife, it'll be not so well finished there. Well, Les George, he's not standing for that. And uh, he sh sh chamfers beautifully all the way around uh, the handle, making it incredibly comfortable. And um, and then he does that for the lock bar cutout. Probably, I don't know, it's really up in my top three of favorite all-time folders. I love this design, and I love how it's executed. And I even love the uh, ProTech versions of it. It's just such a gorgeous knife. And when it came out, a lot of people were making videos asking the question, is this the Sabenza killer? And uh, I tend to say no, you know, nothing's going to kill the Sabenza. But I would say that this is uh, definitely um, equal. I, I just love this knife. All right. So this is the VSEP. And it's also an XHP steel, by the way. VSEP by Les George Knives. Next is uh, one that I'm pretty lucky to have because this one never uh, got mass production. This is the Niche Designs Ingress. N uh, Nick Rogers, proprietor and designer of Niche Designs, designed this. And this is 
the second of three prototypes. And um, he, he gifted it to me uh, knowing that I, I loved it and knowing that I like tactical style knives. He gave me the most tactical of the three um, designs that he made and also a, a non-flipper full titanium, beautifully milled. God, I love the milling on this, the way the, these large cross hatches feel uh, in hand is just so luxurious, but also nice and grippy. And then that continues on to the backside here. Great design. Uh, this blade is, my wife thinks this looks like uh, something a um, Klingon would carry because of that blade shape and that hole opening. Um, I love the harpoon on this. I'm not ordinarily a harpoon kind of guy, but I do like the harpoon swedge on this. And then it's a thin blade stock to begin with, but the broadness of this blade and the height of that flat grind makes it an absolute razor blade behind the edge. And uh, Nick Rogers is a, is a serious knife junkie himself. And um, so when he was designing these ingress knives, he was really going for all the things that that knife lovers like himself uh, really, really look for. And one of those things was a very thin behind the edge geometry. And he definitely achieved it on this knife. Another thing, incidentally, is the ability to spidey flick. And this is an awesome spidey flicker. Great shaped handle, full tie, just a beautiful knife. And I am honored to have it in my collection because there aren't too many of them out there. Another one I'm honored to have in the collection is the Spartan Harzi Folder. Not only did it take me a while to find one in stock, this is before I, I heard from Slicey Dicey that, that he called them and asked them to make one, and they had the parts, quote unquote, laying around, so they put one together, together for him. I don't know if that's something you can do uh, all the time, but in any case, I looked high and low for this, and I wanted the... Uh, the plain Jane version of it, uh, if you will, you know, no, no coating and, and, uh, and no engraving on it. They do a lot of cool engravings, uh, designs and themes on their handles. I just wanted a plain one. And, uh, wouldn't you know, after, after talking to, um, Curtis Iovito on the show here, he said, send me yours and I'll engrave your logo on it. And he did. And so that makes this a, a, a prize possession and uh, a, a prized knife in my collection, but also just one of the greatest A designs. It's a Harzi design, love his work, uh, but also full tie. It just feels amazing in hand. And if we're talking about Sabenza killers, uh, that's a cheesy term, but uh, this is definitely up there with the VSEP as, as a, just a, what am I going to say? Like uh, iconic. I know people throw that term around, but this really is an iconic folder. And I would say a, a uh, real competition for a Sabenza in terms of the solid feel. Like this thing just has that Sabenza feel. And the action is, is right on par too. Such an excellent knife. So that is uh, one of my prized full tie folders there. The Spartan Harzi folder. All right, next up, from one of the greatest makers, if not the greatest makers overseas in China, this is the Riot K2. In my estimation, probably the most beautiful uh, Tanto blade out there. Uh, it has some serious uh, runners up, like the, uh, like the older SOCOMs uh, from the older SOCOM elites from, um, from Microtech, like 2013 and, and back. And also uh, a couple of, of, um, of Emerson designs. But to me, this one with that machine satin finish and that upswept tip, oh, this is such a beautiful knife. And extremely sharp with that hollow grind. Uh, funny story about this is when I I just could not, I had to get this in my collection. I just had to. That blade, every time I saw um, someone else on uh, Instagram or on YouTube showing this off, I, I got I got green with envy. I'd feel blood rushing to my face. I have to have that thing. I have to. And uh, so I sought it out. And 
I originally wanted one of the blue handles with the with the diamonds, with the anodized diamonds uh, milled into the handles, sort of evocative of the handle wrap on a samurai sword. And I couldn't find one and I settled for this. I say settled with air quotes because once I got it, I was really, really happy that I got this bronzed sort of dragon skin uh, handle instead. I really, uh, it's got a lot of character. It feels great in hand. And I, I didn't really care for how it looked in pictures, but in person, I really uh, dig it. What can I say? Uh, knifejoker.com has made a number of exclusives of this knife in fat carbon, in plain titanium, and different titanium handles. And uh, what a great knife to turn into a collectible in that way by, by changing handles and handle designs. Uh, handle materials, I mean. So full full titanium, you've got some sculpture in there. And all of these, I think all of these, almost all of these have the uh, have the steel uh, insert on the frame. I think with the exception of the Spyderco and the VSEP so far. All right, next is another Spyderco. And this is, uh, it's odd to me that I don't carry Spydercos that much, but it's funny that two of my very favorite full ties are Spydercos. And uh, this, of course, is the Spidey Chef. Before I even open it to check out the, the beautifully modified blade, uh, I love this titanium handle. This is like uh, the classic Plain Jane um, Sabenza, the way it picks up the snail trails. And uh, it's just something in how the blade, uh, how the handle is treated and anodized. It really shows wear, and uh, I, I love it. So I sent this off to uh, Mike Emler at Crazy Edge. Uh, yeah, Crazy Edge. Crazy Sharp, I'm sorry. So he sharpens knives and he makes them crazy sharp, uh, and that is his business name. But I had him turn this into a, into a clip point here, the Spidey Edge, uh, Spidey Chef, as you know, has a rounded sort of Santoku style blade. I wanted something with a point, knowing that once it has a point, I'll carry it much more. So he did a, a great job in clipping off the top and giving me a nice point there. But he also gave it this awesome finish, it's sort of a signature finish of him. It, it's like a tumbled, polished, acid stone wash kind of thing. And uh, just love the way it looks. And then he did his patented hand sharpening. It's not patented, but he did his uh, his signature hand sharpening. He uses stones and and has a very interesting way of sharpening that he learned and sort of perfected when he lived. And I think he was deployed in Japan. He was in the Navy. So just a gorgeous knife. He asked uh, Emler, Mike Emler asked if, if uh, I wanted him to treat the titanium handle and sort of refresh it. I said, you keep your mitts off my titanium handle. I like how it's aged and I wanted to keep that in there. So mm, 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 just a beautiful knife. And uh, again, that's the LC200N titanium. Everything about this thing is waterproof or water uh, corrosion resistant. The LC200N steel and then all of the hardware is titanium. And then, you know, the, uh, the handle itself is titanium, full titanium. All right, we got three more here. This next one is the very newest of the full titanium knives in my collection. Uh, this is the Kaiser inversion designed by Dirk Pinkerton. And this is a funny looking knife at first, and then you realize it's a Pical style folder. So it's meant to be held like this, with the tip down and the edge in for particular kinds of fighting, like Libra fighting. Oh, I've been painting. Uh, like Libra fighting and, uh, and, and that kind of thing. So this is meant to be optimized uh, with the tip down, the edge in, gross motor motions uh, for, for saving your life, tactical uses and self-defense uses. But it is a great just EDC knife when you hold it in just your standard uh, grip. It's a great, it's a very sharp knife and just a great utility design I've come to find. Um, just as long as you don't, when you look at it, you kind of want to hold it like this. You want to put that finger groove there, but that's really intended for your pinky in reverse grip. So um, just be careful not to 
grip it like this because you might end up putting your thumb on the, on the edge. So this knife really wormed its way into my heart, um, not only because you can auto deploy it off of the, uh, off of the pants, kind of like a wave thing with this, uh, a waved knife with this nice big thumb stud here, this brass thumb stud, uh, but also this terraced titanium on both sides. It, it is very attractive to my eye and it feels great in hand. And oftentimes I talk about how full titanium is a little slippery if your hands get wet, uh, might, might be a little slippery for tactical use. But uh, the terracing on this really, really helps you maintain your grip and it feels good and it looks good. So uh, yeah, this knife has become it's quickly become a favorite of mine. And I, I love Dirk Pinkerton's designs. I got to, I have a full custom double-edged Pical fixed blade from him. That's awesome. That I'm sure you've seen me show off. And uh, also the concept slash concept, still don't know how to pronounce it. Um, Main Street. Love that Warren Cliff design. All right, two more here. This one, this one is also somewhat new. Here it is. It's the Crystal or Crystal Aurora. Crystal Knives is out of Russia. Got this through Levon of the Knife Nuts podcast. He has a really cool uh, importing business now where he's importing knives, um, most of them designed by Ivan Braganets in Russia, uh, but uh, just designing, uh, bringing in some really cool Russian knives uh, to our market. And uh, this one, I have to say is chief among them. This is just the coolest looking knife. Uh, I love that giant fuller in the blade. And uh, as I've mentioned before, you look at the at the spine of the blade, it's pretty substantial blade stock, but it really thins out with that fuller. And when you get to this lower portion of, of the blade where the cutting edge is, they have really thinned it out by the time it gets there. Uh, great sort of... Um, well, it's like jimping. It acts like jimping. These lines milled into the handle, and also onto the um, onto the full, fully titanium, fully sculpted pocket clip, and really makes it easy to draw from your pocket because you have. It's like you have jimping on both sides of the handle. The only place the jimping isn't good is where there's actual jimping right here on the blade spine. It's it is ceremonial at best. Uh, you kind of don't need it, but uh, it's it's pretty pretty unsubstantial, pretty, uh, it's not grippy at all. But anyway, the th one of the things I love most about this knife is the action. It shoots out, fires out, rockets out, if you will, on bearings. And then it has that sort of sabenzoid uh, feel when you close it. It feels like it has sort of a hydraulic feel when you close it. It's not drop shutty. It's, it's this kind of shutty, and I love that. It's so smooth. Um, so yeah, the Crystal Aurora, let me show you there. The lock side um, pivot has their logo on it. S35VN, very, very, very cool knife. Thin, light, I mean, this is, if you want a full titanium knife for your gym shorts, boom, this is it. All right, one more. Uh, recent guest on the show, Israel Bacchus of Arcane Designs. This is his design with something obscene company, and that is the antimatter. This knife, also uh, manufactured by Riyadh, this knife is just insane. I love it. You know I've been talking a lot about fully symmetrical, double-edged, folding knives and how there's a dearth of them in the market. Well, he's one of one of very few. Uh, Hinderer and uh, um, Sharp by Design, they both make their version of fully double-edged um, folding daggers. And this one, look at that, that beautiful um, finish, that, that satin finish that um, Riyat does is just astounding. So this comes in three different versions. You can get it uh, uh, bronze with black blade, which is really handsome. And you can also get it with a uh, black handle with um, damasteel, which also looks great. But I, when I was kind of laboring over which one to get, I had to get 
the one with this incredible satin finish because I really like seeing the grind lines on both edge and, and really it really on both of the edges and it really highlights the daggeriness of this. It is very sharp and actually a couple of times I cut the palm of my hand because I was I was getting sassy with how I was opening it and kind of had some of my my hand fat over <laughs> over the edge. And so yeah, it rocketed out, but it 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 went through a little bit of my hand doing so. Just a gorgeous knife and uh, full titanium, great pocket clip. Look at that pocket clip. Looks like uh, looks like one of those uh, things that emits electricity. One of those uh, um, things that shoots electricity out and and brings life to to Frankenstein's monster. It's alive, alive. Um, and and those are the kind of influences that go into. Um, Israel's designs. He's really into sci-fi and fantasy and that kind of thing. And so it really comes out in his designs. So I'm going to lay that across. And boom, there you have it. What a portrait. What a portrait of full tie. I love these knives. So uh, just in summation, we have the Spyderco Sage, uh, Sage 2. We have the Tactile Knives Rockwall. We have the Les George Vsep. We have the Niche Designs Ingress. We have the Spartan Harzi Folder. We have the Riot K2, a modified Spyderco Spidey Chef, the Inversion from Kaiser Knives. We have the Crystal Aurora. And then on top here, we have the Antimatter by Arcane Designs my top 10 full tie knives. Uh, I have a bunch of other tie knives that have uh, in, insets and uh, what do you call it? Uh, well, uh, show side handle uh, materials of different materials, but I wanted to highlight these this week. I also have a couple of other full tie knives that just I like, but didn't make the cut. All right. Well, there you have it. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for checking out this uh, this midweek supplemental version of our episode of the Knife Junkie podcast. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. That way, you know, every time I upload a new video and, uh, you know, we know you're not going to want to miss that. Uh, also, check us out on Instagram. That's the Knife Junkie on Instagram. Also, when we do our Thursday Night Knives at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time live, you can also check us out on Facebook or Twitch if uh, that is more convenient for you. And um, be sure to keep your eyes open for the birthday bash. More details will be coming out in subsequent episodes. Check out uh, the Sunday interview show. And uh, well, until next time we meet, I want to thank Jim working his magic behind the switcher because he's there. Thank you, sir. Always greatly appreciated. You make this show what it is. I want to say, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Mm -hmm.